Carowinds is one of the greatest amusement parks in the world because of its location and collection of rides and attractions. The park dates back to 1973 and was built on the border between South Carolina and North Carolina. The main midway of the park is divided by the two states. The rides are outstanding, but is the rest of the park that good? Should you visit this park? My name is Coaster Legend and this is a Carowinds Park Review. This is how this video is going to go. I will talk about each section of the park and my thoughts on it. I will then go through multiple different categories like food and atmosphere and grade the park on that. Something to note is that I didn't get to experience the water park when I was here. Also, there are two entrances to this park, one in the front and one in the back. Starting with the first section is Celebration Plaza. This section of the park consists of two roller coasters, Nighthawk and Intimidator. This is also the main midway section of the park. This is where guests enter and they find many souvenir shops and food stands. This section is pretty nice because the overall atmosphere is great. Bands are playing, Nighthawk is in the background, a huge hyper coaster is on your left. It is just a wonderful entrance. Heading to the left, guests encounter a split path. If you go straight, you will pass Intimidator and enter the Camp Snoopy section of the park. The other path leads under Nighthawk and straight to Copperhead Strike. This path is where Nighthawk's entrance is. This path is pretty nice, as everywhere guests look, they see Nighthawk and a beautiful lake. Camp Snoopy is the kiddie section, and there are three coasters here. Woodstock Express, Wilderness Run, and Kitty Hawk are the three coasters. This section has so much scenery and water effects, along with great rides for the young ones. The next section of the park is the Crossroads. This section is amazing. First of all, this is where the second entrance is. The thing that makes this section so great is the coaster Afterburn. This coaster is beautiful to watch. The gray on the blue sky is really pleasing to look at for some reason. There are no restaurants in this section, but it's fine because this section is small and there are restaurants in Camp Snoopy and our next section, which is Blue Ridge Junction. Blue Ridge Junction is the newest section and is where the new for 2019 coaster is, Copperhead Strike. Copperhead Strike is an amazing coaster. This section of the park has multiple flat rides, plenty of restaurants, and lots of theming. Before we go any further into the park, make sure to hit the subscribe button to see all of my new videos. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Following this section is the county fair section. This section is themed to a fairground with lots of flats and a pretty fun boomerang coaster. This section of the park is probably my favorite just because of the overall atmosphere. It really does feel like a county fair. Next up is the boardwalk. This section is probably the smallest section in the park. This is where Carolina Cyclone is. There isn't really much to this section. Next up is Action Zone. This is where the most thrilling flat rides are and three coasters are here. Hurler, Ricochet, and best of all, Fury 325 are in this section. This section feels most like a typical amusement park section. Not any theming, just rides. Finally, we have Carousel Park. This section is the quietest section of the park, with two coasters, Vortex and Carolina Gold Rusher, and only a few flat rides. The scenery is what really makes this section shine. Now we are back at the entrance, so it is time for the categories. Let's start with roller coasters. The roller coaster collection here is great. The only problem is that this park is very top heavy with four coasters that are way better than the others. Everything else is just all right. Next up is food. Based on my experience, the food here is typical amusement park food. Burgers, fries, pizza, but it is still pretty good. Most restaurants are on the dining plan as well. Next up is flat rides. This park has a great collection of flat rides. I didn't get to ride any flat rides except for the indoor shooter called Plants vs. Zombies, and that was pretty fun. Everything else seemed like typical Cedar Fair flat rides. Drop Tower, Wind Seeker, Chair Sewing, all of those seem great. The only flat ride this park is missing is a Frisbee. That would really help this park out. Our second to last category is Operations. Overall, 
This park has wonderful operations. I was there for two days and I only had one bad experience, and that was on the Carolina Gold Rusher. It took about four minutes to dispatch a train, but that was it. Every turnstile and ride was running great, with trains dispatching every minute. Our final category is overall atmosphere. This park atmosphere is amazing. You can tell the staff really care about what they are doing at the park. The park is clean, there are lots of places to sit and take pictures, and the rides are in the perfect spots. Also, there is a lot of shade and plants around, which is nice on a hot day. There's even one section of the park where there's a tunnel, but the tunnel is made of plants, which is really cool. So overall, this park is amazing. I highly recommend visiting the park. If you want the full experience, one and a half days should be enough. If you want to do a, the water park, I would add another half day onto that. This park is amazing, and people need to visit it more. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Definitely check out my other videos and hit the like button. I'll see you guys next time.